What's up? Welcome to Updates with Mr. Warford. This is for my world history people. We're going to talk about two new topics today. We're going to talk about a guy named John Calvin and a group called the Anabaptists. First, we're going to do a little review of the Reformation. So, so far in the Reformation unit, we've talked about abuses of the church at this time in Europe. Uh, in the uh, le Well, leading up from Middle Ages into the Renaissance into the Reformation, there are abuses of the church. Remember, there was one church at this time. It was called the Roman Catholic Church. So the abuses of the church were things like indulgences, were things like nepotism, where you give an important uh, position of power to somebody in your family. We had popes that were very involved in political matters and uh, corruption. And a guy named Martin Luther comes on the scene and starts uh, preaching and teaching and writing about the abuses of the church and how we need to get away from that. He writes something called the 95 Theses, and that's considered the birth of the Protestant Reformation. After his teaching spread, the church is split. It's no longer the church. It's Roman Catholicism and Protestantism. And there's differences between Protestants and Catholics because of their disagreements on church practices and church traditions, how church should look. So another important person in the spread of Protestantism during the Protestant Reformation is a guy named John Calvin. Okay, He was living in France at one time, and he fled France when he converted to Protestantism. Okay. And because France was majority Catholic at that time, and Protestants were being persecuted, so he left and went to Switzerland. Okay, Through his teachings, he placed a new emphasis on the all-powerful nature of God, and he's most famous for his belief in teachings of something called predestination, which we're going to talk about. So predestination, this thing that's been linked to Calvin for hundreds and hundreds of years, is the idea that God has already determined in advance who is going to be saved and go to heaven and who is going to not go to heaven and go to hell. Okay, The people that will be saved are known as the elect, and according to this uh, doctrine of predestination, before the world even began, before time began, God knew how many people and who they were, who would go to heaven and who would go to hell. Okay, people, another uh, lesson through Calvin was that people by their nature are inherently sinful and bad, and they don't seek the things of God. But those that are elected to be saved uh, really don't have a choice in the matter through this thing called irresistible grace. Okay, irresistible grace just means that those that, God's, that God decides to save will be saved. There's no free will um, according to the teachings of Calvin. Um, because of his irresistible grace and power, those that are called to be saved will be saved. You don't pick God. God actually picks you. So Calvinism starts to spread all across Europe. Um, so in Geneva, a city right here on this map, so you can see where he skips over from France and goes into Geneva, he... Uh, John Calvin forms a mission to reform that city. He goes there in 1536. They, uh, Calvinism becomes so popular that it actually infiltrates the city government, and they start to use religious teachings in their laws and rules in that city. So citizens could be punished for various crimes such as dancing, singing songs with bad words in them, drunkenness, swearing, and gambling. And uh, it becomes such a hotbed for what's called Calvinist ideas that they start training missionaries there, spreading them out all throughout Europe, and teaching these new Calvinist teachings, which are part of the Protestant sect of Christianity now. So by the mid-1500s, this is important, Calvinism has replaced Lutheranism, or the ideas of Martin Luther, as the most important and dynamic form of Protestantism. So people read about Luther during the Reformation because he essentially birthed the Reformation. And then Calvin comes along with these new teachings like predestination and irresistible grace. And we start to see a shift in Europe where people start following Calvin's teachings more, which is very important. 
um, we're going to talk about another group called the Anabaptists. Okay, so the Anabaptists were part of Protestantism. So when the Reformation happens, they are part of that sect of Protestants that are trying to separate themselves from the traditions of the Roman Catholic Church. But the difference between Anabaptists and Calvinists is the fact that both Protestant groups and Catholic groups persecuted the Anabaptists, and we're going to talk about why. So Luther had let government authorities like princes, lords in the Holy Roman Empire play a big part in spreading Protestant ideas. Those uh, government leaders um, converted to those Protestant ideas and then spread them throughout their land that they were in charge of. Anabaptists didn't like that. They were considered radicals because they rejected the idea that the state or government should be involved in any part of religion at all. They thought that church was a voluntary community of believers that had a spiritual rebirth and were baptized as adults. Here's the problem with that during this time. Protestants and Catholics at that time baptized people, dunked them in water to symbolize their salvation um, as infants. Okay, Both sects did that, uh, Catholic and Protestant. Um, they thought that it was actually heresy or went against God's word to bap be baptized again as an adult. So that's a, one way that the Anabaptists were kind of going against either sect. Um, they thought that anyone could be a minister, anyone could be a pastor, anyone could be a priest. Uh, they thought that government had no authority over real Christians, so they didn't have to obey laws that they thought were unfair. They were pacifists, meaning that they would not fight, they would not bear arms for the military, they would not kill anybody for um, a government or for a in a war. So all of these things were not only seen as a threat to religion, which is very important at this time, it's also seen as a threat to the, like, the uh, social structure and the political power structure. So even though Anabaptists were Protestants, they were actually persecuted by Protestants and Catholics in extreme ways. So we're seeing persecution like drowning, beheading, cutting their heads off, burning them at the stake, and you can see some old paintings of this, uh, some of the persecution that they had to endure, and it was because they posed a threat to the power structure of the day. Imagine if a religious group today said, in the United States said, we don't have to follow U.S. law because we only listen to God. Um, while part of us wants to say, yeah, that's cool. Go for it. The other part probably wants to say, well, what if they start doing crazy stuff and the government uh, can't stop them? So they become outcasts, okay? Uh, the severity of punishment depended on where you lived in Europe, but a lot of them had to flee their homes, move to other countries, form small communities, and run from the law. So Anabaptists were seen as radicals, whereas Calvinism and John Calvin were very supported within the Protestant community of Europe. Um, this is kind of random, it's not going to be on your test, but I found it interesting that modern-day Mennonites, Amish, and Quaker communities are descendants of the Anabaptists. Some of their founders were Anabaptists all the way back in the 1500s during the Reformation. So why do we care? Why is this important? We're seeing a further splitting of religion in Europe. There are new uh, groups of Protestants that are forming, and there's a further divide between the Roman Catholic Church and the Protestant Church. Calvinism becomes more popular than Lutheranism. Protestantism is spreading across Europe, okay, so it's challenge, continuing to challenge the religious beliefs of the day. And another important reason that we're learning this is some of these teachings, both from the Calvinists and uh, Martin Luther and the Anabaptists, we see those in churches today, in modern-day Christian churches. So that's why it's important and why we're learning it. So what's next? You are going to work on your vocab list today, whether you are at home or in class with me when we're talking about this. So be doing that today. Read instructions in Google Classroom. Peace.